guys, Standing Simmer here today, and welcome back to the channel for another speed build here in The Sims 4, of course. Now guys, I was, um, you probably will guess this, I'm just saying, because I've said it in like every speed build for the last few that I've done, but this is for another of my current households, so I'm just gonna go ahead and get that out of the way just for the beginning. Um, surprisingly, a lot of my, like the families I play, you know, regularly do come up with the need for houses also fairly regularly, which is convenient because, <laughs> like I said, I've said before, I mean, it seems like all my built inspiration is coming from that these days. So they were in need of a new house, pretty handy because I was in the building mood. And so here we are. So I'm building kind of like an English inspired house. I have done something kind of similar to this before in a very similar area to Willow Creek. Um, this is the original lot where the Spencer Kim Lewis household is. So there actually exists a pretty modern house on this lot when you first load up the game and you go into Willow Creek. But on the other lot, like uh, in this more prestigious area of the world, World, I did build a pretty large like English I think it was like English country mansion or something like that is what I ended up calling the speed build and so I was kind of wanting to build in that style again I think it's a beautiful style I wanted my sims to have this really amazing view of Willow Creek this is probably one of the more elevated lots in Willow Creek if not the most elevated lot and so um, in addition to that, I've also never had a Sim or a Sim family live on this lot either. So I really wanted to kind of play with that and experiment with it. Let them live on this really gorgeous lot. It has like this cool like half circle drive out in the front. You can tell that the people who live here are quite prestigious. Like they, they definitely at least have money, if not fame as well. And so kind of keeping with that whole English style and knowing I wanted to build that way anyway, we're here building in Willow Creek on this lot in that style for a Sim household that I'm playing. And so um, the nice and convenient thing about that is that if I ever decide to like officially tackle a save file of Willow Creek, I already have two builds that go in this area of the world that are kind of of a similar style too. So it looks like that they could potentially be in the same area of a world, uh, which is really handy because you know, this lot I think is like a 40 by 30 or something like that, uh, which is a little bit bigger than what I tend to like to tackle. Obviously like 30 by 20 in my mind is kind of a sweet spot in building. It is sometimes though a little bit too small feeling. So I'm sure for some people, a 40 by 30 is an ideal lot size. It's something I do, I wouldn't say regularly, but I have done them multiple times in the past. It's just not, the, it's not the size of lot I always gravitate toward. So there's a little bit of a background, a little bit of like a rundown on what we're doing today. So it took me a little bit of time to put together the outside shape of this house. But once I've like further solidified some details, such as uh, the fact that that little structure off to the left of the house wasn't gonna be like a, a mock garage, but instead more like a sunroom. Maybe it used to be a garage and they kind of repurposed it into being a sunroom. It is the area of the house that has those nice, larger, more modern looking windows. So it would make sense that that would potentially be like the add-on or where the renovations took place. It actually took me a very, very, very long time to both choose the windows for this house and also choose the coloring for the outside of this house. I actually skipped over the vast majority of that because I just struggled for so long so long. I really didn't know going into it exactly how I wanted either of those things to look. Really when it comes to these older houses and honestly like almost anything suburban in nature, it does take me some time to decide what I want to do. I feel like modern houses and houses that fit in areas like Oasis Springs and now what we have over in like the Mirage Park area of Del Sol Valley, it, I kind of have a really good idea going into it of the color scheme that I want some of the outsides to be. Now choosing the actual texture of the wall coverings is another story entirely but the color I typically know going into it but these older houses and like suburban houses I almost always find myself gravitating more toward like a black and white type theme with probably some stone or brick thrown in and this house is really no exception to that as you can like see or will see here very soon that's essentially like the rundown of the outside coloring like in a nutshell so as is usual in my builds I did start off by putting together a lot of the outside and I set up like the basic structure of the landscaping but didn't do any Anything more like fine-tuned especially with regard to the outside of the house in the front so there's pretty much like just a tree there and nothing else at the moment but we will get back to that toward the end of the build and um, that actually it's honestly something I tend to find myself doing in a lot of my speed builds if not all I start outside I put the basic structure together usually the house itself is is pretty much finished it has all the detailing that I like um, things like 
uh, flower boxes and uh, like drain pipes and things like that. The, a few things that I tend to like to put on the outside of my builds to make them look a little bit more detailed. Usually that's all in place by the time I head inside to do the interior, but then the final touches on the landscaping typically happens closer to the end of the build. So if you ever want a quick little outline of what the vast majority of my builds tend to look like, then that's definitely it right there. And so just moving on into the inside of the house, we have the kitchen area and then that leads over into that more sunroom looking area. I think I did something just somewhat similar in that other English country build that I did a while ago now. That other build was so large that I actually had to do it in two parts. It was built on, I think it's a 50 by 50, once again, in this whole area of the world over here. So it's a pretty large build. If I remember, I might link in the description, both part one and part two. So you guys can just take a look over there if you'd wanna see that one too. But I did something somewhat similar, which is that the dining area does go in more of that sunroom look. I don't know if you, I imagine if you lived in this house, you might want something that's a little bit more formal looking. And the other house that I built in this style did have like an official, like more formal dining room area. And then like a breakfast nook off the side in the sunroom area. This house, however, really just has that one eating area for the most part. I imagine you could really easily repurpose another room, such as the room that's just right next to the kitchen area that I end up turning into more of like an ante room. It's like, it has some bookcases in it, it has a little like glow bar, a little sitting area. That could probably very easily be more of a formal dining room. The only thing is that if you're coming from the front door of the house, you would have to walk through that formal dining room in order to get to the kitchen. And I don't know how typical that is on like, you know, regular floor plans or, or more realistic floor plans. I honestly do not know. If I'm being completely real with you, it didn't even cross my mind to turn that into a dining room when I first started building this house and furnishing it, but we're not even to that room yet. So <laughs> sorry for like talking ahead a step on the build. It's difficult to know exactly what I'm talking about when you're not directly looking at it on the screen, but you know, you guys have imaginations and you might see it later in the build anyway. So I, like I said, am building this for a current household, was building it for a current household, and it was kind of more the last part of a generation that I was, I had this house. This is definitely not a house that the household was going to be starting in. Uh, as you can see, it's a, quite a large house. It's very, like I said, prestigious looking, and I don't imagine that you'd be able to afford it unless it was like a family home or you started off with a lot of money. This is definitely more of like a, the Sims that are the adults in this household have done well for themselves with regard to their careers and everything like that. And they're kind of ready to settle into more of like a forever home. They're wanting to uh, kind of just, just get something that's what they could live in into their retirement and you know potentially like you know entertaining the grandkids later on this particular house was actually built for two like i said members of my current household who also have twin daughters so there's a couple and two twin daughters and that will make you know a lot more sense and i can tell you a little bit more about their personalities later when we're doing the bedrooms on the upstairs floor but we're not even to that point just yet really through the, the interior of this house too i did something slightly different to something i've done before which is that i skipped doing the the hallways and all the bathrooms. Now the, the hallways, uh, the hallways is kind of new there. I almost always skip the bathrooms and the floor planning and things like that. But the actual hallways of which there are several, there are maybe like two or three hallways on the downstairs floor alone that kind of lead into one another. And those do have decorations in them, primarily like um, what I tend to gravitate toward for hallways, <laughs> just in case you're wanting a rundown and you want to know what you're missing and you don't necessarily want to stick around for the screenshots of those. Um, the basic structure of a lot of my hallways tends to be um, nice wall painting. Oh look, let's put a mirror over here above a table that's kind of like sitting against a wall. Really just to break up the space, else the hallways are just one continuous piece of like room, more or less, which is the structure of a hallway in general. But uh, in order to kind of break up that long, kind of boring stretch of wall, I tend to put things like tables up against them with mirrors or paintings or, you know, little clutter decorations, things like that. So I did skip over those in the build itself. Um, I don't remember if I did that while I was also doing the bathrooms or not, but either way, either both of those things are cut out of the video in its entirety because this video just all told was approximately, well, it was many, many hours of labor when it comes to the actual building and the furnishing. But there were five video clips that I had going into this build because I built it over the course of several days. I think I started it something like, by the time that this video is going live, it's been more than a week and a half since I started building this house. And so, yeah, <laughs> there's, 
there were, um, I started it like on a, I don't know, Friday, Saturday night, and then built it in chunks over the next couple of days. And so many video clips to have to deal with. I was just trying to get through all the footage in order to make sure that it wasn't too long when it came to the end result. I really like my speed builds to be no more than like 28 to 30 minutes long. My thinking there is that for the most part, and this is just judging my own experience and what I've heard other people say, I don't like them to be more than that length because you almost have to like, it's difficult for, for people going about their regular life to just devote their time to sitting and watching that long of a speed build. Um, honestly, when I watch speed builds, I typically do so when I'm running, for example, because I actually run on my treadmill inside my house. The town where I live is a little of the sketchy side, so that the road running is a lot less in the cards for safety's sake. So I tend to run on the treadmill. Actually, every time I run multiple times a week, I'm on the treadmill. And so I say up my speed builds for that point because I can really devote my time and focus to it specifically. I usually come out of a run with lots of ideas about building in general, both from having watched speed builds and I guess just the rush of blood to my brain. I just feel like I'm much more inspired after that time anyway. And so I tend to kind of pair those activities together. Else, I do not know when I'd be able to really watch a speed build. I listen to them a lot, say if I was doing something else and couldn't devote my attention to it. So long story short, that means that I don't tend to make my speed builds like ultra long. Um, once again, for that reason, I feel like that our attention spans as, as a whole are a little bit limited too. So, I mean, who wants to watch a speed build that's like super, super long like that? Usually not me. Probably not you guys. Let me know if I'm wrong there. And if you guys like really, really long speed builds, I might be able to try to accommodate at some point, but this one I was trying to keep on the lower end of things. So that living room area that we, again, I've t mentioned this before in my speed builds, but typically when I'm chatting with you guys during a voiceover, I'm just kind of like standing over here at my computer, just kind of hanging out, you know, and uh, the footage is playing in front of me, fully sped up and edited and all that kind of stuff, but I'm not really looking at it the vast majority of the time. So I get through to the point where I actually want to say something about the build that I think would be relevant. And I have, comp I don't even know if like I'm to that point yet. I don't know like where the voiceover is going to line up with the footage. If I was a little bit more together personality wise, I probably have my eyes glued to the screen and halfway know what was going on, but that is not me. Like I just, I'm just kind of looking all around the place, you know, like looking at my second monitor. I don't even know. So I'm just kind of chatting with you guys. And that means I'm just, just completely distracted when it comes to knowing where we are in the build itself. You would think I'd be able to remember like where we might be or what we might have already done based on the footage and knowing what I did when, but that's also not really the case. Cause if it's been more than a week since I built the actual house, then and the, the chances of me remembering what the order of rooms are is just like slim to none. <laughs> like it's not going to be a thing. So anyways, the living room area of this house is one of my favorite living rooms I think I've ever put together. It's really long in shape and I was kind of a little, not just really not sure at the beginning what to do with all that space. I didn't really know how I was going to fill it all out, but I almost never put grand pianos in my houses and I took the chance to do that in this build. And it has a really cozy little sitting area. I loved using those rugs that have, that came from the Get Famous pack to incorporate into rooms of all kinds. They have so many options and swatches and all that kind of stuff. And I really do like using them. Now, I imagine that the family that lives here um, then this does line up very well with the personality of the Sims I was telling you about earlier. They they have a really old traditional looking house. So there's a lot of history in this house. It's obviously not new. It's been around for a while, but I imagine that they brought their style into the house. So even if it might have some older paneling and wallpaper and things like that, they probably repainted the vast majority of it and they brought their own furniture in. So the furniture does have this more youthful style and a little bit more classic. Uh, classic, I, I'm probably not even using that word appropriately to be honest with you, but uh, I just mean more like not old, foggy, traditional furniture to match what the exterior of the house could indicate. More like newer pieces and things like that. So it definitely fits their style, which is more bright and colorful. In fact, the this is going to seem weird because these speed builds are going out one week exactly apart from one another. But the speed build I shared last week that was called uh, Bright Bungalow, I think is what I called it. This is actually built for that family as well. 
And so once again, I know that like, obviously I'm not using these houses in my gameplay one week exactly apart. I'm just sharing them with you guys a week apart. So just a heads up there, there has been a continuation of that family. I love the family a lot. And so I'm building them another house <laughs> essentially. So I hope that that's not too big a spoiler for what's coming up on the Tumblr. To be honest with you, just in general, I've kind of been having like a little mini crisis with every single save I'm playing right now gameplay wise. So if you guys were kind of, again, keeping an eye on the channel last week I released a channel update on Thursday I think it was that had to do with my family dynamics challenge and the fact that I'm moving that LP to twitch now in case you didn't see that um, just check back a little bit on the channel once again it's just a couple videos ago at this point but I am just not really able to devote myself to the time that it takes to put together a let's play right now uh, mainly because of just the massive amount of time it takes to record and edit now I actually know some people know of some people more than anything that can record an LP in one go and they just they just talk all the way through and there aren't really a lot of cuts there's not a lot of editing in the like the timeline of the footage itself but I really like an editing style for LP LPs, both the, the LPs that I watch and the ones I wanted to produce, which is that you cover a lot of time in the whole, like the, the recording time itself. So you play through maybe at least two sim days has always kind of been my goal. And you just cut out all the lagging time, like all the, oh, the sims are sleeping and oh, they're just skill building and all the, the stuff that could be a little bit more boring for those of us who have played the sims for a bit, you know, like <laughs> you don't need to see how sims, like how sims build their logic skill, for example, like you just need me to tell you, oh, she was logic skill this, now she's logic skill that. I don't know if that's making any sense at all, but essentially that just means that the recording and editing time is just massive. To edit a video of any length, uh, LP wise or gameplay wise, it typically takes me like maybe at least 150% of the time that it actually takes to record. So we're talking multiple hours of investment for just one episode. The, the short version of that is that I'm not gonna be doing LPs and I explained that in the update video, at least right now on the channel, more just to kind of give me some more breathing room when it comes to my personal schedule. So that's what I talked about in that video, but just in general, I've been having a little bit of a crisis with the saves that I'm playing. That's kind of how I started this whole little ramble part of the, of the video here. But I just kind of, <laughs> the last couple of days, I've just had this urge to just stop playing every single thing that I'm playing, which is ridiculous because like I've been playing Not So Berry for eight generations and you guys will be getting a current household on them this upcoming weekend by the way i didn't want to just mention that right now but i've been playing not so berry for so many generations on top of the fact that it came from the goth family that i played for six generations and then the other saves i have going are like in the second and third generations at least and I just have this massive urge to just stop doing everything I'm doing and start something new. And I, I am kind of doing that to an extent with some of them. I'm not letting all of them go because again, my Family Dynamics LP is going to be going on Twitch. So that's more of like my Twitch Sims 4 gameplay right now, or it will be. And then like with some of the other stuff, I'm discontinuing some of the saves. I'm continuing others of the saves. I'm modifying the saves to make them a little bit more interesting to me so that I can feel like I can continue them. I'm not discontinuing Not So Berry, by the way, just in case you guys are worried. I know that here on YouTube, that's more of what you guys might be familiar with, mainly because I share those current household updates here with you guys. And so don't worry about that. Not So Berry is not going anywhere. I did make some changes to the save and to the Sims and all that kind of stuff so that I could, once again, continue feeling invested in what was going on there, but I am not going to be discontinuing Not So Berry. Um, now, uh, we're, we're, I'm dealing with some other saves right now too that don't always necessarily concern you guys, but um, yeah, just a, just a heads up there. No worries about Not So Berry. It is still going to be here and I'm excited to continue playing. To be honest with you, I'm at the point in that save where I'm so like wanting to be done <laughs> with the challenge. You guys know, have you ever made it so far in a legacy that you're just like, I just have been playing this forever <laughs> and I just want to like, I want to complete it. I want to be done. Not because you don't love it, but because you've been doing it so long and you can like see the end and you're just ready to keep on going. You know, that's how I feel about Not So Berry right now. And I've felt that way every time I've reached close to the end of a 10 generation legacy in The Sims. And with this family in, in particular, I've been playing them for like something in the range of like 15, 
16, no, sorry, 13, 14 generations. <laughs> I'm adding more generations than I need to. When it's done, it'll be something like 16 generations. But anyways, so I've kind of just like rambled through the vast majority of the interior of the house, more specifically the upstairs. So in the master bedroom, I used like a little bit more of a traditional looking bed, but then some other types of furnishing. Um, the lighthouse poster in the upstairs master bedroom is really cool because the Sims that are gonna be sleeping in that bed and in that room actually got married on the deck of a lighthouse. And so that's kind of sentimental to them. And then uh, with the teen girls bedrooms, one of them is a little bit more on the like, I, I hate to like generalize cause you guys know stereotypes, man, I tell you what, <laughs> like I'm not a fan cause it seems like every Sims gameplay could ultimately end up being the same thing. And I promise you that there's way more backstory to these Sims that I can't get into right now, but to generalize these personalities to give you an idea of the Sims that are gonna be going in these rooms. The really pink girly-ish bedroom is more for a Sim who does have that kind of personality. She is a serial romantic. She is, she doesn't really, she's kind of innocent about it though, is the thing. Like that's the kind of the kicker with her and she's still lovable even though she like is doing all these crazy activities and all that kind of stuff. And then her twin sister is just more kind of like toned down, a little bit more relaxed. She is a massive brainiac and she really, she really, really likes to study and she's really into school and she wants to be a veterinarian. And so that's where she has like all those animal posters and things like that in her room. I actually built this house for the Sims and then later was talking to my friend Emily and she was talking about how like she was kind of in a built like had some builder's block going on with the specific house that she was making and she said that she would make me a house for my sims and I was also like already midway through making this house so these sims have plenty of options about where to live <laughs> between the build that Emily made which I'll link in the description if I remember to do so and also this build that I'm making right now and so they have plenty of options when it comes to uh, living like I say <laughs> so that's pretty cool so that's kind of a little bit of a rundown between like the types of members of this family and like just a base generalization of what their personalities are like so you guys can get an idea of who's going in this house to be honest with you I really, really like this house, but I also really love the house that Emily built for this family. So being that I'm closer to the end of the generation, I'm probably just gonna plop them in Emily's house and let them live out a little bit of time there and then uh, move out the Sim I'm gonna be continuing to play with and then letting the other Sims retire here. That's kind of my plan right now because if nothing else, I built this house and it gave me the inspiration to create this house for these Sims and then I've also filled out another lot in Willow Creek, which like I said earlier, if I ever decide to like officially work toward a save file for Willow Creek alone or for just all of the game, then I'll have a couple of houses for this area of the world, which are pretty big lots. And it's kind of a little bit tricky in my mind as to what style could potentially go there. And so yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking about that. Now I do have some interesting stuff to tell you guys about save files specifically, more with regard to my building up Windenburg save and all that I've been working toward there. I'm really excited to continue tackling that project. I've already built some stuff for it, guys, and I'm really excited to share it with you. So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and start wrapping up this voiceover now. As much of it was, it felt like it kind of just like descended into chaos there toward the end, <laughs> but I usually feel that way at the end of my voiceovers. It's just like, I don't even know. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this build as a whole, and do know that if you want to download it, it is on the gallery, and that the information for that is in the description as always. But let me know what you guys think about this build as a whole too, and if you guys are experiencing any kind of a builder or playing block of any kind, because <laughs> then we can identify one with another because man that's me right now anyways like i said i am gonna go ahead and round things off right here but thank you guys so much for watching i really really appreciate it i hope you're having the best of days and i will see you very soon bye